Yeah, hello again all. Um Peter Okebukola, I uh, will be facilitating this interesting lesson on computing reliability of a questionnaire. The questionnaire is one of several several instruments that we use in education. Uh, we have achievement tests, we have psychometric tests, we have attitude inventory, we have all of that. For me, the instrument that we use is a key part of our research and if it is unreliable then the data that we collect will be fake and of course the conclusions that will be drawn from such data will not be reliable that is why it's important for researchers in education to ensure that the instruments that they have crafted they have developed are well validated and have very high reliability value. So today, we'll be looking at how we compute the reliability of a questionnaire. It promises to be an interesting lesson. Uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it as well as I will enjoy facilitating it. So we uh, are learning about reliability and uh, we learned about this in our undergraduate, postgraduate days, and you know, at this higher level, we want to be able to use some tools for determining reliability. But let us get a sense of what reliability is by way of meaning or definition. Uh, so, Dick, can you help with that? Uh, reliability is an attribute of an instrument that measures the consistency by which that instrument measures what it's supposed to measure. Yeah, so thank you, Dr. Sadiq. You are right there. Reliability has to do with consistency of measure. But mind you, an instrument can be bad in terms of its construct. But if it is consistently measuring the same bad thing, then we say it's reliable. That means we must not allow our instrument to measure the bad thing in quotes. In other words, we must ensure that the instrument has a high construct validity. That means the it, what it purports to measure, it is measuring it. And so when we establish good construct validity, then reliability follows. And a good reliability coefficient will be the way to go. So what are the two things we want to do in this lesson? We want to be able to code data from a questionnaire as we prepare it for determining its reliability. And then number two objective is to use SPSS to compute the Kronbach Alpha reliability of a questionnaire. Might have call it call it Kronbach Alpha. Some people will call it Kronbach's Alpha in a minute you'll get to see who this Kronbach of a man or woman. No, 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 it's a man. Is So let us look a little bit about uh, the questionnaire that we want to determine its reliability. Yeah, okay. So thank you. Uh, we will go to the instruments that we want to determine its reliability. By way of an example, we will use the instrument that uh, Dr. Grace Oshun has developed. Uh, Dr. Oshun, can you tell us about, very briefly, the highlights of this instrument? Yes, it is an instrument to, uh, which has been designed for undergraduates in business education to rate their lecturer's lesson delivery. Um, this is for the purpose of quality assurance. Presently, the instrument has been given to some colleagues for their input, after which it will be redesigned and then administered on some students in business education for reliability. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Oshun. So let's go on to objective number one, coding the data. Coding the data from the questionnaire that Dr. Oshun just told us about but let me show you what that questionnaire looks like 
the questionnaire has this instruction kindly take that's this this take place this tick mark the items below on four to one rating on a four to one rating scale we strongly agree being the highest that's four and strongly disagree the lowest that's one so you can see strongly agree agree disagree strongly disagree so let's scroll down and see the number of items that we have on this instrument we have 23 items in total of course you can see the different sub sections classroom management as uh, lecturers personality emotional intelligence and so on so this instrument is now administered to a group of undergraduates what are they supposed to do to read their lecturers on this let's take the first one the course outline is usually given to students at the beginning of the lesson so this student will then indicate whether he or she strongly agrees or just agrees or strongly disagree or strong or, or disagree or strongly disagree with the statement now assume all the students let's, let's say 50 of them or 10 of them or whatever have completed this questionnaire the coding that's our objective number one is where we are at now let me show you uh, a few items uh, that well just have uh, that, that i've done randomly to to uh, fill up what you must do is with all the questioners questioners now in from your 50 or so students you will then have to number them this is number one student number one and this student is saying that he or she let's say that student to be to be myself that I, I disagree with this statement that the course outline is usually given to students at the beginning of this of the session now uh, i disagree with this so from my rating scale you know this is four three two one so the score for this student that's myself would be two here would be one and here would be will be one so when you have scored all the items for all the students you don't you don't come up with this coding sheet so recall that we have 23 items on that questionnaire and then the student here the student numbers here so number one recall that number one student filled in two or, or rated two one one and so you do this for all the all the items so that is how the coding is done my suggestion is that uh, after the questionnaires are in and you have numbered them and you have uh, scored them two one all of that somebody should just uh, create a table like this and you put all these figures and you can have this typed in microsoft word so anybody can be asked to do this and then you of course will have to review what has been uh, entered here so that is the very simple way of coding the data i'm sure you have followed so far and our objective number one has uh, been achieved so with our objective number one coding data achieved let's now go to objective number two that is computing with spss so how do we proceed here so we proceed as follows we go to our coding sheet that's a coding sheet and we have this standing by and we go launch our spss I already launched one here so that's how SPSS will come and it also shows you a blank you can see that data view so what we'll do is uh, from student number one uh, we have 10 students answered here uh, coded here so we just select all the what you need to do just select like this so that's done 10 students and then if you right click because we want to copy so you can copy this data 
and then you swing to your SPSS and then you paste the data here so you right click here and you can see paste so you paste the data there oh, okay you can see it's telling me that it's legal because I mean look at it here um, in the variable view so we have to go to the data view and so you right click and you paste so you can see let me move this this way you can see that data that I have here two one and all of that that's what I have uh, this uh, table two what is the next step now we want to analyze this data uh, before we do that we know we mentioned about chrome back alpha or chrome back alpha now let, let, let us see uh, let's have a few let's have some chat about this uh, wonderful American psychologist and mathematician Lee Joseph Kronbach. Uh Lee Joseph Kronbach, you can see when he was born and when he died. Actually, October first, the just independence, and the man lived for eighty-five years. And uh, we pray God that we we'll all live healthy lives up to eighty-five and uh, beyond. So the formula for Kronbach Alpha uh, is this. I do not need you to bother about about uh, how you physically compute this because chances are high that you you make an error from that so uh, best thing to do is to use the computer and in this case we are using SPSS so I'm back to the SPSS screen now watch how I do the analysis you can see this menu here file edit view data transform and so on I will go to analyze you click on analyze and it comes with another drop down now you go to all the way down I'm not going to stop yet yep I'm stopping here scale and I'm going on to you can see reliability analysis so you click on reliability analysis and all our items on the questionnaire which would now SPSS now takes to be variable one you know there are 23 uh, 23 of them so you can see 23 you know the lie so we we'll come back here and you can see all these variables here at 29 so what you will need to do is to move them one by one to here the items you want to use to here but there's a shortcut if you place this one here and you hold the control button on your keyboard and hold and at the same time press a that's control a it will select everything and then you move all of them here next thing to do let's select some statistics that we want SPSS to generate for us for this analysis we want you to do item descriptives scale and scale if item is deleted I reckon we're okay with that so let's go to look at it continue and then we we'll say okay so SPSS does the analysis for us in little little time little less than no time and what are we seeing cases we have 10 valid cases recall that I'm taking you back now to our coding sheet we had 10 students so that's why it's giving us this 10 valid cases so you can see Chrome Bax Alpha SPSS itself has called it Chrome Box Alpha. So why don't we settle for Chrome Box Alpha? Now talking about Chrome Box Alpha, why Alpha? Now this is because is the first data is the first uh, uh, computation for reliability that Lee Joseph Chrome came up with. He was actually thinking of doing the beta and so on, but well, maybe he didn't have that time, or maybe he passed on. Well, so. Uh, be before it could go on to the beta version so we have chrome box alpha here recall that 23 items and our chrome box alpha is point you can see it here 0. 0.840 which is very respectable very high indeed so we can see that the questionnaire that we are using for the purpose of this uh, practical work the one that dr grace Oshun presented to us has high reliability so it's consistently measuring that thing so we can beat our chest as a right let's go ahead and, and use it let's do, see some other item statistics that 
uh, have been generated for us by SPSS. So our item number one, you can see the main is standard division. Don't bother so much about this uh, table, but let's go on to the next one. This is a very important table. Item total statistics is giving us the scale mean if deleted, the scale variance if deleted. Now, uh, this last column is important. Chromebox alpha if item is deleted. It means that if we take off item one from the questionnaire and we present uh, the others, you know, we have 23 items, we present the 22 to students for our, you know, main study if you like, then our Chromebox alpha is going, is not going to be 0 0.84 again, is going to be 0.83. So that's not good enough. So we'll return. So we'll go on. Let, let's even look all the way down. Let's see the one that we take off that. Okay, you know, you can see this. 13. That is, if we take it off, if we take item 13 off, we're going to get a better Chromebox Alpha. So you may be advised to drop item 13. Let's see wh which other. Oh, look at this one. That is, if we drop 17, we may end up with this. So by dropping these two items, we may be able to get higher Chromebox Alpha value how interesting now that will be the um, uh, summary of our lesson for today uh, to recap we are two objectives we uh, said we want to code the data and you recall that the questionnaire let's see it now now this is the questionnaire you administer to the students after they have uh, returned in their questionnaires to you you number the questionnaires number one to number last and then you score based on this rating scale and you then code like this and after coding you select mind you you don't select from here because this one shows the number of the items on the questionnaire you select only the responses because that is what you want to determine the reliability of select all of this and you right click to copy and you launch SPSS and you go to uh, you paste here uh, you go to analyze you go to scale you go to reliability analysis let me reset this you move all these variables to here uh, by holding control a everything is selected and you go on like this you select the appropriate statistics item scale uh, of that and this and this well, I hope you have uh, enjoyed this lesson. But I tell you, one good thing that you must do is you must continue to practice, practice, and practice. I wish you all the very best. And uh, from me, Peter Okebukola, we'll see you next lesson.